previously on tech to see Print and Z have sent their build plate for me to review. I'll attach it to the build surface with some binder clips. Oh yeah. The pattern of this particular build plate is now imprinted onto the bottom of this part and it is very, very smooth. Polycarbonate warps so much when it cools, warping the entire plate. So this is going to be the emphasis of my next video, polycarbonate versus the Print and Z skin. The Print and Z skin incorporates the same surface adhesion qualities as the Print and Z plate. However, is 1.5 millimeters thick, sticks directly to the build platform, weighs less than the Print and Z plate, and might not work with induction sensors. You can stick the skin directly to an aluminium heat bed or to a sheet of glass. Here, I'll be attaching the skin directly to this aluminium heat bed, but I'll be leaving this layer of tape on underneath. That is so, when it comes time to remove this skin, it'll be a much easier task with the tape underneath. Before I stick on the skin to the blue painter's tape on my aluminium heat bed, I'm just going to give the top surface of the tape a wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol just to clean the top surface of the skin to allow the 3M adhesive underneath the skin to get a better grip of the tape. I'm just going to use a pen to mark the corners of where I want the skin to lay as when I remove the 3M adhesive backing and stick it down I'm only going to get one chance at it so I just want to make sure that it's centered on the build platform. So I'll remove the backing off the skin. Line it up with my markings. I'll start at the back. Get that lined up with those markings at the rear first. And I want to push this down from one side only because I don't want any bubbles underneath the skin. So I'm holding it up on one side, this side here, and progressively working my way down to the front of the build platform. Fingers crossed, no bubbles. Looks pretty good. Feels flat anyway. As this is a cantilevered bed, I had it resting on this box just so when I was putting pressure on the cantilevered bed it wouldn't push down while I was sticking the skin on. So that box helped. And I just have a metal ruler here. I'll just measure across the face of the skin. So that looks fairly flush on the surface. I can't see any light coming out from underneath. Refocus that. Just recalibrate your z-axis so there's only two pieces of paper distance between the nozzle and the skin. The chess pawn piece has just finished printing. As I was not using the heated bed here, I'm right to just pull this off as it's just finished. So before I use the spatula to try and remove this part, I'll see how well the PLA has adhered to the skin and see if I can just pull it off by hand. Oh, yep, that was very simple. Shining in the light there. It's a bit hard to see because this is tra uh, translucent orange PLA. But um, very smooth uh, bottom, as you'd expect. Quite a nice chest set, this one. 
The links will be down in the description. The Pion 230 quadcopter arm printed in ABS has completed successfully. The heated bed is now cooled down to below 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, you saw just a second ago that the front of the arm and the rear of the arm have not lifted. So just like the Print in Z plate, it allows the ABS to stick down uh, without lifting. However, I had to print this with a heated bed of 90 degrees Celsius, which is a tad higher than what Print in Z uh, recommends for the skin. That's because when I set my printed bed to 80 degrees Celsius, the, the front of the Pion arm here did actually start to lift. So I had to bump up the temperature by 10 degrees. Uh, that seems to have solved the problem for me. So ABS sticks down. Now I've got my spatula here. Let's see if I can take off this uh, Pion arm from the skin. There it goes. It's stuck down probably a little too well. Oh, but as soon as I got one part up, the rest just seems to come away pretty simply. <laughs> so here's the bottom of the arm, and just like with the Print and Z plate, you can see these white marks that are underneath the ABS. So this is obviously the black surface, so the white marks don't come from the surface. Just like the previous arm, if I rub, say, this part of it, see it's starting to disappear. And just like before, the part is very flat and has a nice flat surface to it. I think if I printed this again on this skin, I would drop the temperature down to 85 degrees Celsius. So that's smack bang in between the 80 that I started with and 90 that I finished with. And I may also raise the Z height by maybe 0.05 millimeters, just to assist in allowing this part to release from the skin after the print is finished. Printed Z advised me that the white marks that you see underneath the ABS part can be quickly removed using a heat gun. You can see, yeah, uh, that's pretty much clean now. All, all of that white residue has gone. And after all that heat gun action, I'll measure the flatness of this part again just to make sure it hasn't excessively warped or warped at all. Looks pretty good. Still... still flat. Just like the Print and Z plate, the Print and Z skin has held down to this Pion 230 quadcopter arm printed in polycarbonate. The front of the arm hasn't lifted, nor has the rear of the arm uh, lifted off the Print and Z skin. So it performs very similar to the plate. However, unlike the plate, we can't simply remove this entire build platform and then flex it free. goes. Certainly not as easy as the plate to remove, but not, not impossible. And just like the Print and Z plate, perfectly flat finish underneath this part. And has it warped? Doesn't look like it. Looks pretty flat to me.
I've stopped this print midway through because you can see the front part of this part has started to warp. It's started to lift right about, right about here. This is quite a large piece. This is the power supply mount for the Hypercube 3D printer. So I was expecting some troubles with a part of this size. I've set the bed quite high. It was 90 degrees Celsius and I made sure that the first layer was you know, squished down enough so it wasn't touching, the nozzle wasn't touching the skin, but it was squished down enough to be a flat piece of polycarbonate that was deposited. And unfortunately, it hasn't been able to hold this down. What I might do next is try to print this with a brim. So in Cura, I'll add a brim to this part and we'll try again. But let's just see how easy this part is to remove off the skin. Yeah, so no worries at all. Once the, once the skin has cooled down, removing polycarbonate from the skin is not a problem. So I don't think we're going to have an issue with having polycarbonate stuck down as much as we had uh, ABS previously. Um, so that means I could potentially go down another maybe 0.05 of a millimetre to assist. But I'll definitely add the brim and we'll see how we go. Well, it lasted a bit longer. We were able to print a little bit higher with this part before it had started to warp, but unfortunately, adding the brim has not solved the problem with polycarbonate warping off the uh, print in Z skin. This is still a better result than just printing directly on blue painter's tape, as there would be no way at all that I would reach even this height uh, before warping would occur. But it looks like polycarbonate remains as quite a difficult filament to print with. And just like the previous review with the Print and Z plate, the skin held down PLA, ABS and small to medium polycarbonate parts just fine. In fact, with polycarbonate, even though it wasn't able to handle printing larger uh, polycarbonate pieces, it still fared far better than blue painter's tape, as even with blue painter's tape I wasn't even able to print this Peon 230 arm without warping on the rear. So far, I've printed the king, the queen, and a single pawn piece from the spiral chess set. Three down, only 29 more pieces to go.